so kind. Yes. You've been much better to us than you've been to anybody else. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Now, Heavenly Father, we know that you know all about the sick and can you? Yes. Oh, you know where every sick bed is. Yes. You know where everyone that's going under procedures in the hospital. You know about the nurses. You know about the doctors. Yes. You know about the people that are there to help the sick. Yes. You know about the people that are there to help the sick. Yes. You know about the people that are there to help the sick. Yes. You know about the people that are there to help the sick. They don't know you in the free part of this thing. God will pray that you turn around and say, Lord, yes. let them know that this is a good day. Yes. This is a good time. Yes. Have your father to get to know you, Lord. Yes, Have your father because those that don't know you Jesus. won't have a chance. Oh, God, we know that you give us all a chance. Yes. You give us all a day to pay. And have your father to just on it. Step out on that faith. Yeah, yes, yes. Have your father and just try to do something that Please and in that sight. Yeah, we want to glorify you. We want to edify our man. Yeah, we want to do the please, sir. God, I to go in out the your people. Yeah, we want to follow the all things and good and perfect come down from the wall of life, God. We thank you, Lord, yeah, for you to write it as a word, Lord, that you can write in our lives. And now, God, we pray that you will bless and minister of the gospel everywhere. All those God yeah. treat the dead better. Yeah. And the yeah. God, we just ask you to let them preach your word. Please. And you say it's enough. Yeah. And God, we just pray that we can be your father. Good father, Lord. Oh, and they yeah. are good shepherds, Lord. Yes. Yes. Father, let us be able to go out and proclaim to the world that the way to the sin is death, oh God, with the gift of God is eternal life. Yes. 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 Christ Jesus, our yeah. Lord and Savior. Now, Heavenly Father, yeah. we go through this work of experience, Lord. Yes, Lord. We just want you to be with us, God. Yes, be with us, lead us, and guide us, Lord. Yeah. Somebody yeah. might be out there in the wilderness. Somebody yeah. might not yeah. know what's going on. Yeah. All right, yeah. Father, we believe us, God. Your flock, Lord. Yeah. We can lead them in the way to go. But, Lord, if you can give us the increase. And yeah. that's all. If we go through this with sin, God, and pray that you would just please accept our way of worship, God. Yes, accept our way of worship. We don't know what to do, God. Jesus. You have to lead us, God. Yes, yes. Yes. We don't know where to go. But Heavenly Father, we know the goal you do yes, in everything. We don't know what the modern may bring, Jesus. oh God, but we know who holds tomorrow. Yes. God, we can just lean out, yes, stretch out, lean on your own. Everlasting yes. on yes. God, and we like others from sometimes we're going to run down to the end of this journey. Lord, we're going to be in it. Come this way no Jesus. more. Heavenly Father, but we know God. We know that God's God somewhere is looking out for us. Yes. Leave us in every step we make, Lord. Yeah. And then, God, we pray that you will be with us, Please, that you will meet us, yeah. that you will be kind to us. Please, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Jesus.
continue to help her to heal. Amen. And uh, it was something that was not anticipated, but something that had to happen. And we're thankful that God allowed uh, the doctors to intervene in the appropriate time. Amen. We're also asking special prayer for Sister Pat Moore. She is going through some uh, situations with her illness and there's a possibility that she will have to be undergoing a surgery in the future. Uh, and we just pray for her because she has a special situation going on with her health here. So let's remember her as well. Let's remember Sister Beatrice Jamar. She's also coveless at home and she has some ups and downs with her illness. And so let's keep her in our prayers. Amen. I have a special praise report. I asked you a couple of weeks ago to be praying for my brother-in-law, uh, Mr. Sherman Glover Jr. He went to his doctor this week, uh, and the doctor checked him out uh, just a few days ago and found out that he didn't have any more cancer on his liver. So we thank God we give him the glory and praise for that. He will be continuing his chemo to kill any other cells that might be there. And uh, he's not out of the woods yet, but hey, God has given him a great blessing in which he is rejoicing. And we are rejoicing as well. Amen. Amen. So thank you again for your prayers for sure. Praise report. Elder Little Thomas, uh, I talked to him a few days ago, and he was doing very well. And our church clerk said he came by the church one day, was walking like he used to walk, walking pretty fast and talking good and talking strong. And so I'm so thankful that I talked to him and that he's doing much better. It makes us feel good when our members are doing better. So we thank God for him and that wonderful report. I'd like to ask you to also continue to pray for Mother Ethel Oaks. I talked to her on yesterday. She was very excited that she's doing much, much, much better. And she offered a fervent prayer like Ella, Ella, Ella just offered a while ago. And her prayer was so, so stirring that it made my day. She wanted to pray, and uh, she prayed, and I was delighted that she did because it made my day. And just a friendly reminder, brothers and sisters, uh, about the 25th, which is a few days away on Tuesday, is Election Day. For those of you who live in the city, uh, please go out to the polls and vote. Don't stay home and think that your vote doesn't count. It does count. So please exercise your civic duty and go out and vote to the, for the candidate of your choice. And then on uh, November the 3rd, I know that's a way off, but I ask you to go out, get up and go out and vote. Your vote counts and your vote is dependent upon in this election that's coming up for the President of the United States. So let's get up, get out, and go to vote. Amen. Thank you so much. And we don't want you to continue to pray for our church. I thank you so much for uh, the members bringing your tithes and your offerings and keeping uh, up for the support of the church. I thank you so much for that. You've been diligent, and God is going to bless your due diligence. Thank you so much. Those are our announcements, and um, at this time, we're going to uh, have our affirmation of faith. Uh, it's Communion Sunday, so we're going to do our affirmation of faith together. And you can remember it at home while you're watching. Just remember it, and maybe it'll trickle your memory as we begin. That is to the affirmation of faith at this time. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church Universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll have the singing of our, our glory of Pasha.
heart, we go to observe our holy sacrament, the holy communion, uh, better known as the, the Lord's Supper. We're going to do that, and then we're going to have a prayer uh, of praise to bless this consecration of the Lord's Supper. And I'm going to read to you a few things that it says in our confession of faith about the Lord's Supper. And I hope that you're prepared and Hope you have your elements uh, with you. I hope you picked them up on yesterday. And the ones who are worshiping already have theirs in hand. Listen at what our Constitution has to say about the Lord's Supper, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. The sacrament of the Lord's Supper is not to be thought of as an addition to corporate worship. It is rather to be understood as central Christian worship. It gives distinctive shape to the worship of Christians. In the Lord's Supper, God acts to give those who come to the table in faith the spiritual nourishment necessary to sustain them in the, our Christian lives. The quality and growth of our life as a Christian are inseparably tied to this sacrament. The sacrament is more than a memorial to or a reminder of Christ's sacrificial death and resurrection. It is a means instituted by Christ for his disciples, through which the risen Lord is truly present with his people as a continuing power and reality. Hear the words of the Apostle Paul that he instituted to the church at Corinth, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 28. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup when he had supped. Say, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. Come off from me. You can do nothing. The institution of the Lord's Supper. Now we will have a prayer of praise and blessing over this sacrament. Father, yes. So 
some music from the Daryl Lockhart. Jesus' name will be magnified 
And we pray, oh God, that the Holy Spirit will continue to be our guide. Amen. Now, Father, we pray that you will continue to go with us in this moment as we worship you. Yes, we are few in number, but God, we have others who are part of this body. Yes, with our present with us, but present in the heart and in the spirit. Yes, now, Lord, we pray that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 I greet you with Jesus' joy. Amen. Amen. And I thank God for another opportunity. It's good to be in the house of prayer. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be back at Union Hill one more time. And I give honor to God who's the head of my life. Jesus Christ is the head of the church and to the Holy Spirit of the legal scattered. I thank God for our elite, some of our two of our elite elders who are present this morning, Elder Ellis and Elder Matthews. We thank God for our first lady. We thank God for uh, Sister Portia and Sister Angela. And of course, we thank God for our efficient, our elite minister of music, Brother Darrell Lockhart. Amen. I always get his name and stuff. Sometimes I want to call him Brother Pete O'Brien, but it's there a lot. Amen. <laughs> so the joy of the Lord is our strength. And you just got to have this joy. The world didn't give it to us. The world can't take it away. We thank God for Jesus this morning. Amen. And we are just happy and delighted to be here. God is such a good God. As we break out of our spiritual huddle with a hand clap of praise unto Almighty God, we are led by our spiritual coach this morning, the Holy Spirit. We have come out of the intermissions of another week. We momentarily leave behind all the concerns of our daily activities of life that we might proceed in the worship of Almighty God, that we might worship our God in spirit and in truth. Amen. I therefore call your attentions to the second chapter in the book of Acts I lift up in our hearing verses 38 through 47. And we'll find these words in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 38 through 47. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises are to you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things come and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And 
the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I want to tag this message this morning. The Holy Spirit makes the difference. The Holy Spirit makes the difference. If I were to use a subtopic, it would be all for one and one for all. all right. Amen. That would have been a good thing for the Democratic Convention last week. But God didn't give it to them, but he gave it to us. All for one and one for all. The Holy Spirit makes the difference. There are at least four spiritual nuggets that I want to embrace or uplift from our text today. They are theological themes. Number one, repentance. Number two, baptizing, baptism in the name of Jesus. Number three, remission of sins. And number four, receiving the Holy Spirit. Let me repeat them again. Repentance. You got to remember this. Baptism in the name of Jesus. Remission of sins. Receiving the Holy Spirit. All four of these are essential to our walk in life as Christians. Every member of the body of Christ need to remember these and uh, uh, remember them and lay them to heart. Or keep these in mind. When you think about your spiritual formation, when you think about your walk with Jesus Christ, you ought to understand how you arrived at this place today. I don't mean in this sanctuary, but I mean in the place of your life where you stand as a Christian. You ought to always remember where you started from. The first step, again, was repentance. We had to repent. Amen. And after repenting, we had to do what the Lord required of us. He set the example. He went to the river of Jordan and submitted himself to John the Baptist. Baptism is the second thing. Again, and the reason for baptism is for the remission of sins. And then the fourth thing that happens, occurred after we were baptized, is the receiving of the Holy Spirit. And I'm talking about the Holy Spirit makes the difference. Yeah, the Holy Spirit makes the difference. We must... Uh, Understand, the Holy Spirit must have first priority on our spiritual needs list. The Holy Spirit. I said on last week, most times it is rare that we even talk on a daily basis about the Holy Spirit. It is rare that we even mention the Holy Spirit. It is rare that we even talk to the Holy Spirit. But we need to understand how essential the Holy Spirit is in our life as Christians. We must understand that Jesus said, if I go away, I will send to you another comforter. And believe it or not, brothers and sisters, we need another comforter. In times like we're living in, we need another comforter. You might have mother, but mother might be gone already. You might have a loving father, but somebody might say, my dad is already gone. He's laid there in, uh, uh, out there at Northside Cemetery, right, on Jordan Lane. But you need another company. Jesus said, you need another company. No matter who you have living and who you have with you, you need another company. And I don't know a single person that doesn't need another company. There are times in our lives that we... Sometimes we are burdened out by the vicissitudes of life. There are things in life that can just stress you out. And there are things in life that can be like an overwhelming burden in your life. And you need another comforter. You need somebody who will always be there for you. You need somebody who said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. That's what Jesus meant when he said, if I go away, I will send to you another comforter. And we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we need the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, listen, uh, he, is, he is required.
referred to as, as a person, uh, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is referred to as a he, yeah, and not it. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit is a he and not it. Amen. The Holy Spirit is referred to as a person and not a thing. He is the third person in the Holy Trinity of Almighty God. God the Father, God the Son, and God Holy the Holy Spirit. Thank you, believers. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Yeah. John 16 and 13 tells us, But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. In the Greek language, the term uh, uh, he cannot be translated any other way. So again, I reiterate that the Holy Spirit, uh, why long we need the help of the Holy Spirit while on this Christian journey? We cannot make this journey all by ourselves. Amen, amen. The Holy Spirit is working in, in the life of every true believer in Jesus Christ, amen. even right now. Amen. John 16, verses 8 through 11 tells us that he convicts us of our sins. The Apostle Paul declared according to Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. Then the Holy Spirit will convict us when we sin, miss the mark, and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. In Psalms 133 and verse 1, the psalmist declared how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in union. Jesus Christ expected his followers to abide together in unity. Amen. After the cloud descended uh, down from heaven uh, to ascend Jesus back up into heaven, the apostles were awe-stricken. They were in wonder. They were amazed by what they saw. And they stood there gazing up into heaven. And then the angel said unto the apostles, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into the heavens? The same Jesus that you've seen go up in such a manner will come back in the same manner. So he said to the, to the apostles, Go on into Jerusalem and wait there on the Father's promise. And they went in unity. And you see, we call brothers and sisters where there's unity, yes. there is Amen. They were like branches interwoven together and extended from one mind. And when Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord. They were all in one place. And suddenly God fulfilled his promise to them. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with other tongues, other dialects, and the Spirit gave them utterance. They were all able to speak with foreign languages, and there were led at Jerusalem during that time, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And they were all amazed and in doubt. Uh, some had missed emotions, and they said, How uh, here we these men who are Galileans speaking the native tongues wherein we were born. Yes, uh, and they had mixed emotions uh, and, and said to one another, uh, uh, what is the meaning of this? And others were mocking and said, these men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, said unto them, ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you. You need to fact check yourselves. Listen to my words. For these are not drunken as you suppose. That, that, that's, that's your presupposition of them. It is only uh, the third hour of the day is too early in the morning to be drunk. But this is that which uh, was spoken by the prophet Joel. Uh, and it shall come to pass uh, in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. God's personal affirmation and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and, and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. That's what's going on. That's what you hear. That's what you're seeing. God is doing what he said he would do. Right. Now Peter continued and proclaimed uh, uh, within the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, when Peter had concluded preaching uh, on that day, verse 37 tells us, 
fathers, when they uh, heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest uh, of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do in times like these uh, in 2020? What shall we do in time of uh, uh, a pandemic? What shall we do? Uh, yeah, in times when the wicked keep on struggling, what shall we do? Uh, in time uh, uh, when things uh, seem like sometimes our backs are uh, up against the wall, what shall we do? Uh, in times like this, when, when it, it looks like the, uh, uh, the, the, the rich keep getting richer and the poor keep getting poorer, what shall we do? When, when it's hard for some to make it, some people don't have what we have. Some people can't afford a plumber. Some people can't afford a, 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 to get a, 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 even new carpet when the carpet is wore out. Some people live in, 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 in trailers. Everybody don't live in an apartment. Everybody don't live in a house. Some people live in tents. Some people don't even right. can't afford a tent. Some people live out in the fields. Some people can't even afford three meals a day. Not, and not only three meals, they can't afford one meal a day. And they ask, what shall we do? So Peter, Peter said to them, Yes, oh, Holy Spirit, thank you. Holy Spirit brought some else in my mind. Yes, he brought some else in my mind. In times when voter suppression is taking place, in times like these, when, yes, the postal service is being perpetrated and 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 the the the, the mail boxes are being taken away and the, the the mail assorted machines are being taken out to keep folk from being able to cast their votes. Mm -hmm. What shall we do? Well, in time like these, ah, uh, well our hearts have been pricked by the Holy Spirit and by the doctrine of Jesus Christ. What shall we do? Then Peter said of the deep. The first thing you need to do is repent. Right. Yeah, repent. Don't apologize but turn from sin by turning to God. Yes, yes. Don't say I'm sorry. For God is sorrow. The Bible tells me in 2 Corinthians 7 and 10. Godly sorrow, working repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world of working death. Peter declared, repent. And the second thing after that is be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, this here's a theological point. I want you to hear this. I'm not going to be here with you long. Jesus said, in Matthew 28, be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. But Peter here takes it to another level. Yeah. He's talking to men who have renounced Jesus Christ. They said they believe in God, but Jesus said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. So they were, they were giving allegiance to Rome. They were given a leave with the idol gods and the idol worship. So Peter went to another level. He said, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus. God Almighty. We also here.
be a thing with all the people. When people see that you're the real deal, when they see that you will praise God in spite of, you have faith with you with it. Because they see it. It's something about it. It's something about that person that gets up and say, I'm going to church. They, they're right here. If you go on, they say, I'm going to church. All right. See, you're going to get back. <laughs> yeah, see, you're going to get back. And it's something about that. See, you're going to get back that sticks with your mind. It sticks in your mentality. See, you're going to get back. Give me about five more minutes. <laughs> People, they had things. And the Lord added to the church daily those that were being saved. Let me share with you, beloved, something else I've learned. I've learned something from the error about the physical body that was designed by our Almighty God. I've learned something about the anatomy of the human body. That is the cerebellum. There is a serum, there is a sternum, or the collarbone, there is a tarsal and the metatarsals, mm -hmm. there is the phalanges and the fibula and the tibia, there is the dermis, talking about the skin, and the epidermis, there is the white blood cells and the red blood cells, there are the arteries and a total of seven million cells, uh, there is the liver, the lungs, and the heart. There's the Philippian tomb and the esophagus. There's the small and the large intestines. There's the endocrine system. There's the thyroid glands and many other members of one body. And all these members are proud to be a part of the one body and one another. And all these members unite themselves with one another to strengthen the entire body. That means that the eyes are complementary to the ears. That means the head is complementary to the neck. Uh -huh. That means the nose is complementary to the mouth. The mouth is complementary to the tongue and the teeth. When the mouth coughs or sneezes, the nose will blow sometimes. To support, when the tooth aches, uh, the brain is sensitive. Yeah, the eye goes out for the hand. When the little toe is on it, the big toe feels good about it. Because it belongs to the same foot. All right. When the leg is injured, the head tells the eye. Yeah. And the eye tells the hand. And they are all for one, because one is for all. all right. And when I reflect upon the human anatomy, I can't help brothers and sisters but think of the church. The body of Christ. Whenever I think of Christ, I can't help but think of the head of the church, oh, Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. Whenever I think of Jesus Christ, I can't help but think of Almighty God. When I think of Almighty God, I can't help but think about John 3.16. Uh -huh. I think about the universality of God. Right. For God so loved the world. It is the love the city I came from. It is the love the city that I'm born in. God so loved the world. He loved all the states and he loved all the nations. God so loved the world and he demonstrated and evidence his love. God gave his only begotten son. Yes, as members of the Lord's church. There are many members of one body. Jesus Christ is the head of yes, the body. Yes. The body called church. The Holy Spirit makes the difference. Yes, you see, the Holy Spirit keep on guiding us. The Holy Spirit guides us into unity. The Holy Spirit guides us into oneness. I'm reminded that it was one dark Friday. One dark Friday afternoon, yes, it was a place called Calvary. Yes, the head knew the body needed a savior. The head decided, I'll sacrifice my life so the body can be saved by grace. 
the Father gave the Son, and the Son gave his life. He was crucified on an old rugged cross. He died, he died, he died on an old rugged cross. He died, I tell you, the souls were made free. He died until sins were forgiven. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for all our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, and with his stripes, and with his stripes, we are healed. The other day, my back was hurting so bad, I couldn't hardly get up. I have to lean on something just to get up. I have to strain myself just to tie up my shoes. But I was reminded, with your stripes, I'm healed. I tell you, I didn't know if I was going to stand today. But I'm reminded right now, with the stripes, I am healed. Yeah, I tell you. With his right will heal. Yes, uh, they laid his body in Joseph and Matthew's brand new tomb. But right early Sunday morning, right early Sunday morning, right early Sunday morning, God raised Jesus. Your Lord and my Lord raised Jesus. Raised Jesus from the dead. Paul said, I 
might not be ever put like Apollos. But I tell you something, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and I have my love, I become as a sounding brass and a tingling cymbal. He 
baptized in the name of Jesus. Then you will have the remission of sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus died for you. If you're out there and you don't have him and you have not received him, he's available for you right now. And all you got to say is, Lord, I open up my heart to you. I want you to come into my life. I've said I'm sorry. I've said I'm apologize. Lord, teach me how to truly repent. Amen. Have God the sorrow for this. Yes, yes. That it will not have to be repeated again. I don't want to be repeated of it. But I want to repent. I live a fresh life with you. An anointed life. A fresh, clean life. We have done what the Lord commanded us. And you have the opportunity. We'll hear another selection from our minister of music. Oh 
morning today, I'm just going to ask you to do a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to ask you to do, uh, by way of reminder, is on Tuesday to go out and vote for the candidate of your choice. I'm going to ask you to pray about the election that's coming up, the general election in November. I'm going to ask you to pray about it and pray that God will touch your hearts to get up and go out and cast your votes. Don't let nothing stop you. Don't let anything turn you around. And this is the last thing I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you today, I want you to send in a post. If you want the Lord to give you those four things, you might already have them. But if all of them have not been activated in your life, I want you to post yes if you want the Holy Spirit to activate them more. Now they're there, but the Holy Spirit will activate them in your life. Remember what those four things are. They're theological concepts that we cannot live without as Christians. The first thing Peter said was repentance. You gotta have it. Amen. We gotta have it. I've got to have it. Then the second thing is baptism in Jesus' name. Amen. And I don't mean go back and get in the water again, but I mean in your sanctified minds and hearts. Amen. Ask the Lord to take you and let you declare Jesus. And I see him really as the Savior of your life. If you want to do that, and you've had a hard time trying to get there yourself, and you want the Holy Spirit to touch your life, just check yes. Just post yes, Lord. Yes, I need your help, Lord. He knows what you need help in and I need help in. Amen. And uh, I'm getting through the post for me right now. Post yes for me. Yes, Lord, I need your help. Okay. Can't make it without it. So I want you to do that, and you'll see the difference that the Holy Spirit will make in your life this week. I pray that you'll have a great week in the Lord. I pray that God will just be with you and help you be with him. He's with us all the time, but I hope you will be with him. There's a difference, you see. I want you to be with him. Give him some of that time. He's giving you the time, but I want you to take some of that. Be with him. Intentionally. Be with him. And you'll see what I mean when you get with him. You'll know when you're with him. Amen. Now let us receive our benediction. I pray that you have a blessed week in the Lord. Thank you, Lord. These are the words of Jesus. In this final prayer to God, prior to his crucifixion, sanctify them through my truth. Thy word is truth. Thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they might also be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through thy word, that they may all be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, and that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Eternal God, our Father, I thank you for blending yourself for the sake of humankind. You blended yourself as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And you became one Jesus was one, and the Holy Spirit became one with you. Now make us one, O oh God. Make us one, Lord. Make us one in our faith, and one in our belief, and one in our livelihoods. Yes, Father. That we will be better, Lord. And that the world might be better because we are being intentional about better. Make us better, Lord. Yes. Make me better, Lord. Yes, Lord. I can't do this by myself. But I ask you to do. I ask you, Lord, remember right now, not only us, but I ask you to remember Reverend Strobridge and her family right now. 
not able to be here, but I ask you to remember her. We have a vagina to know you now. Now, Lord, I pray that you bless all of the elders who are not here today. Bless them, Lord, and their families. We love them, Lord, but nobody can love them like you. Bless them and keep them. All the deacons, all the godly women, the ushers, all the members, our children. Now, may the grace of God and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, please abide with us and go with us. As we leave this place but never thy presence, we ask your blessings with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen. Amen. amen.